Hello everybody. As we left last time, I had uh, calculated the can ohm resistor wattage values and I ordered them and I got them in today. And so I'm in the process of putting all this together. Um, I cut a piece of Lexan for the base and then I used some eyelets, some electrical eyelets and just soldered it to the end of uh, the resistors and tied them together. Now I took and put a drop of epoxy on the, uh, the big power resistors, the others are floating. As you can see there's probably you, you may be able to see it, there's some divots. I had started to drill and countersink these uh, eyes uh, into the uh, Lexan and uh, then mount on top of that, but they were going to be too low, so I decided just to extend them up and use the leads for the, for the terminals. I think those will work fine. Uh, let me give you an update of uh, where I'm at on the uh, the, the rest of this. As you can see here, this looks like the highway of death. <laughs> uh, components and wires. It's, uh, I'm not done. I'm probably 95% done with it. Let's uh, take a look under the, uh, under the chassis and see what that looks like. Okay, here's uh, some of the uh, cap replacement. Uh, I haven't got my caps that I've ordered. Fortunately, I've, I have enough. There's a few oddballs that I'm waiting on. And one of them is uh, right up in here. I don't know if you can see it or not. But it's for the tone control. Like .008 or something like that. And I didn't have anything. I could probably make it, but... Uh, I'd rather just go with one if I had to. Um, there was uh, this capacitor mounted on the side here. And there's actually uh, three capacitors uh, in that. And so what I decided to do is go ahead and use a terminal block and put those capacitors there and tie them in there also. Um, the can home, if you'll remember, uh, goes on the back there. So when I mount that, I'm going to uh, go ahead and put a terminal block on the end of it. Excuse the wires, <laughs> every which way. But uh, and this is where my AC power is going to come in, and then I'm going to go right over here. I've already roughed it up right along there, and uh, put a fuse block right there. So that's where we're at on that part of it. Now I have cleaned the capacitor cans. Now those are just going to be for looks to go back in the holes. Um, what I've determined that I'm going to do is right behind the can ohm, tie the electrolytics in to the can ohm and to the rectifier tube. It's it's right there it's like a terminal block so instead of bringing it over from those cans I'll just mount them side by side I won't have to do a terminal block after all uh, the uh, I cleaned up the uh, tuning condenser uh, this uh, uh, took this part did a, a grease job on it I want to show you something. Look at this. Uh, you know, a lot of them have a, a variable drive that uh, has a fine tuning, and this one does too. However, the ones I've seen does not have a, a sleeve on it like this. But as you turn, turn it, it's fast. But now, if you get to a, tune a station, you can come back, and it's sl it's just you see the. Uh, the pin in it from here to here is a fine tune and then when it gets on around here it's a it's a fast tune again so I thought that's pretty neat I'd never run into one like that before when you get to the station you just 
have a little fine tune there. All right, I guess the next thing I'm going to do is uh, go back uh, and pull the speaker out and look at it and see how it how it looks. I tried to do this with a tripod, but it's just really hard. Look at the numbers. Uh, I believe that uh, uh, the 101 and the E91, that speaker will go in either one of those. So we're going to pull that out. There's some uh, There's who sold it, Hensley Radio and Sound. Does it say Knoxville, Tennessee? I'll have to check that out. Anyway, there's three, uh, three nuts that's holding it, and I believe every one of them, every one of them are, are loose. I don't think that uh, it's someone's had it out. I just think that uh, as time goes on, these things uh, vibrate loose. Let me uh, put this up and uh, take it out, and we'll we'll look at uh, take a little closer look at the speaker cone itself. Got the uh, speaker removed. That looks in pretty good shape, and I did double check. That is Knoxville, Tennessee. It's not far from here. About 50 miles. Here's the uh, speaker. Let me get that away from that corner. <laughs> that, so. ah. That's all I need is a finger run through it. But uh, it looks in pretty good shape. Um, a little dusty. Let's see if I can do this without. I know. No rubbing sound. I think it's in good shape. Just a little cleanup. I think that'll be fine. Of course, uh, as we uh, we'll do some more tests on this uh, output transformer and see um, how that turns out. But all in all, that looks pretty good. Uh, three glue blocks need to be replaced. Um, This has to be glued back down, nothing major. Um, some veneer cracks and chipping. I have received that. Uh, Gary, um, up in Indiana, Rebel, 9668 I believe uh, wondering if we might be able to rub this out and polish this and get this clean that, that could be a side experiment but uh, the grill cloth doesn't look that bad so I think we're in good shape on that uh, this is pretty rough some veneer that's loose we'll have to try to glue that and do some patching here um, and in the corners back here but uh, not too bad not too bad okay it's been a while uh, I took a uh, small break in uh, the middle of all this uh, and went to play golf for three days with uh, our, my church group so uh, came back and started working on this and I thought I would give you a view underneath and then give you a, an update of where we're at and uh, where we're going with all this. So let me uh, take this off the stand and then we'll, uh, we'll look at uh, each individual item here. As you can see, I got the can ohm in. I uh, mounted it to some plexiglass or Lexan. And uh, I went ahead and, and put some glue on these just to, just to stabilize these connections. 
I ended up putting the filter capacitors here instead of up here. I will put the cans back in just for looks, but uh, all the connections are right here on this can ohm and also on the rectifier tube right here. So there was no need to really do anything. So there's the uh, can ohm replacement. Um, as you can see, the caps been replaced uh, a lot of the resistors have um, the flexible resistors were right here and so um, they were common there so I flexed them out here and uh, used the uh, replacements there um, I went ahead and put a uh, terminal strip here with a couple of safety caps the uh, AC line will, will come in and this one will be the negative on this side uh, or the neutral and the other side will be the uh, the uh, hot one and it runs over to the one side of the fuse this end of it goes goes on out to the uh, on off switch and then back into the transformer. Um, I don't know if you remember, there was a, a large capacitor, and there's actually three capacitors in here uh, that was mounted on the side over here. So what I did is I put a terminal strip here, put three different capacitors and wired them in individually uh, along this terminal strip. Now what do we have left? Well, we've got to go up here and do the grid caps uh, wiring replace those uh, we've also got to check that output transformer on that uh, speaker one more time we also got to go in here and verify every terminal every junction make sure i got good sorter joints make sure it goes to where it's supposed to go that's going to be the time consuming thing uh, then uh, we'll uh, bring that up and test it. Uh, got to take the drum, the dial drum, if you'll remember how that, that rotated around, clean it up a little bit, get it operational, uh, put the lights in it, uh, and uh, I'll show you a little bit later what I'm going to do with the lights. And then of course work on the cabinet. So we're getting closer, we're getting a little closer, but uh, it's just a long, drawn-out process, and you just can't get in a hurry on this stuff. Let me show you what I'm going to do with the, uh, the lamps. I ordered a box of um, number 40 uh, bulbs, and uh, then I was uh, looking online at various techniques that people have used in the past, and they've uh, used uh, a glass die and I ordered it and <laughs> I didn't do all my research I decided to go another route uh, another guy suggested that uh, uh, the green ones just didn't show up with the glass dye so what they did is they ordered from a pinball uh, company some covers some silicon covers to go on the bulbs of course, it, it'll go on a little better when it's wet, I would think. But you cover that up, silicon, and then there's uh, the green ones. And um, they say that the green ones look a lot better. And they're almost clear, as you can pretty well see. And uh, I think that's uh, going to be a better option than the the die itself and uh, I like to work on getting those on that red one doesn't want to go on so good but uh, I think you would probably use uh, one of Michael's techniques and somehow moisten these and don't really say how to moisten them but uh, there it went on so there's the red and the green bulbs with those silicon covers on them and I think they'll be uh, I think that'll be a lot better than than the uh, 
glass die. So I think that's going to wrap uh, this video up. We've got a lot more things to do, but we've got a whole lot more. Uh, uh, we've got a lot of progress made in this thing. So uh, I've got to come over here and clean up the highway of death. I uh, just wanted folks to see what all was in that. Um, so it uh, there's a lot of a lot of broken wires in there. Uh, it was as if they were melded and they really weren't. They were just uh, cracking and they would they, they, they deteriorated and would stick together and then if you tried to pull them apart they would fall apart and so uh, there's a few I left in there like little short runs that were suspended that wasn't going to move, wasn't rubbing against anything so I left some of those in there but uh, as you can see I, I replaced a whole lot of components and a lot of wire in this. So anyway, we're going to wrap this up and uh, uh, just so I can give you an update and we'll start working on some of that other stuff here shortly. So I got picked up a, a few more subscribers, gosh probably almost 10 in the past week or so. So that's, uh, that, that's, that's exciting. I really appreciate uh, everybody passing along my videos and uh, uh, word of mouth. Uh, is is a real good way of uh, of advertisement, and I appreciate anybody that has recommended my videos. So, from Larry from the hills of Tennessee, thanks for watching.